It's on. It's happening. It's time for Mixology Masterclass. How exciting. I've missed you guys. I've missed doing this because we've had a couple of weeks off, but we're going to be back once a month and it's going to always be free. So it's always going to be on this page that everyone can see um, on the 3D Letter at Home page. Keep joining in. Keep your eye out for when we're going to do them and what theme we're going to go with. But I'm kind of excited about this one because we get to talk about the nitty gritty of how to put flavours together, how to actually mix the flavours that you like together to be able to come up with your own cocktails or your own twists on classics. Because that is the most fun thing about making cocktails, I think, is finding the things that you love and that you, so that you can make it to be your favourite thing. And I love cocktails, I love making them, I love showing people how I can find the flavours that they like and how I can put them together into a package, into a glass that other people can enjoy. So when people come to me and say, I really like creamy cocktails, I'm like, banging, let's make a creamy cocktail. I try it and I'm like, that tastes really good, but I've had enough, I don't like it. And that's fine, because that's my choice and that's my flavours that I like. I like them sour, I like them to have a bit of sharpness and the creaminess doesn't suit my palate, which is cool. And it's cool for you to not like an old-fashioned. It's a classic cocktail, it's the first one, it's a big old whiskey flavour. doesn't mean that it has to be for you. It's fine, you don't have to like everything. And I think that goes the same for a lot of things in life. It goes the same for exercise and everything. And I could go off on a tangent about how we all listen to different voices. And we all have this voice that we put out there. And some people connect to your voice and some people don't, and it's all right. Because we all have these different flavours that we enjoy. And I like that I can appreciate someone else's palate and hopefully come up with something that you love. So let's get into it. Let's get started. We're not going to do any shaking, nothing complicated. You don't need any equipment. You just need a glass, some ice, and your favourite booze and some mixers and a bit of fruit. Easy. So, I've been putting this out there as a three ingredient thing. I don't like rules. Some of these are going to have four ingredients. What are you going to do? You're going to fire me? You're going to sack me? You can't. Because it's my thing. This is my thing. I make cocktails. So, I've got these lovely gin balloons. I'm glad these have come into fashion. Because I like them a lot. They're pretty. They feel nice. You don't. They stay cold because when you pick them up you don't have your hands around the glass. And stuff like that. It's kind of important when you think about cocktails, because if, I don't have one here to hand, but if we had a martini glass, it's the same thing. They're nice because they're open, and they're designed like that so that your nose can get in there and it's a big thing that you can smell what's going on. And it's so tasty in this nice big glass that we can fill with ice. So, let's get started. I get to fill it with ice straight away. Where's my tin? I'm going to do this. Oh, come on. I practiced. There we go. I practiced to show off for you. So let's, let's throw it off my shoulder and call it on the back of my hand. It means nothing, but showing off is fun. You should show off more, by the way. I think everybody should show off something. Find something that you can show off about, because it makes me feel good. If I can do a skill and show someone else, and especially if I can show someone else how to do that skill, that gives me a little buzz. It makes me happy. I don't show off for me, I show off to help, help other people show off. And that's why I'm so well suited to being a personal trainer who teaches people how to do handstands and swing around on stuff and how to make cocktails. It's a fun life. It's good. So, I've got loads of ice in my gin balloon. Let's talk about the gin and tonic. Let's just change it up a bit. I've got, uh, I know Natasha's got some of this as well. I've got Whitley Neal Raspberry Gin. As it goes, as a flavoured gin, I quite like this one. It's pretty good. Whitley Neal do loads of different flavours, there's so many. I haven't tried them all. I've tried this one, um, I've tried the blood orange one, which I'm not a massive fan of. And if my friend Martin Lee knows, he can attest how much I love blood oranges. He keeps reminding me that I always talk about blood oranges in cocktail passes. I love them, but the blood orange gin, is, it, it's not got enough, like, of its natural gin flavours. It feels a little bit astringent to me, that um, blood orange gin, but this one, it's pretty good. It smells pretty like, I can still smell the gin, but it's got this little like berry sweetness in the background. 
It's good. It's good. So, I'm going to stick a paw in this. I'm going to work with a double M bottom measure, so I'm just going to free paw. Because I can. So, I've got 50 mil. There we go. So I've got 50 mil in there. Put my bottle back. So, let's talk about the fruit. So, when we make a normal gin and tonic, I think that everybody, no matter what, should get some citrus fruit. It doesn't matter what it is. And you squeeze it into the glass like we've been doing with a lot of these cocktails and you rim the glass with the lime wedge that you've just squeezed so it's nice and wet and juicy and you get the juice of the lime around the glass. So squeeze it in there, Let's just stick it there, I'll grab it. I'm going to wipe this around here like this and I'm going to go for two lime wedges because you know, you know your boy likes sour stuff. I can't, one lime wedge, never enough, I always want two. So, I've got that in there. And it smells already, I can smell the lime and the raspberries. Really good. But like I said, I'm cheating. I'm gonna go with four ingredients. I've got some fresh raspberries here. I'm just gonna drop these in here. And this might seem like really obvious, but maybe it's not. I'm gonna go for, um, what have I done with it? Oh, I did bring it out, I thought I'd forgotten it. I've got Mediterranean tonic water here. These are really good. And Fever Tree are amazing, but I'm really glad that there's other brands now starting to replicate this style of tonic water that isn't really sugary. Schweppes and um, whatever the other one is. I've forgotten what, what it's called. I can't remember. The other big brand of tonic water, anyway. I feel like it's a little bit too sweet, and these ones have got a little bit more going on. So, that is it. It's not a cocktail, it's a gin and tonic, but we've just changed it up a bit. And we've just made sure that the fruit in there is made, has made a bit of a play in there. It's part of it. So, let's see what we've got going on. By the way, did you notice I shaved my beard off? Still got a beard, because um, nobody wants to see baby face Ricky. I'm short enough as it is, I don't need to look like a newborn baby. It's so good. It's so good. And we're, we're talking about mixology, we're talking about the art of putting flavours together. That Mediterranean tonic water, I'm not sure what makes it Mediterranean, if I'm honest, but it does have something going on in there that does make it a little bit more Mediterranean. And it doesn't actually say floral variation of Miriam, but yeah, it's a little bit more floral. But it's good, I know that, I know that I like that. But that squeezing the lime and rimming it around the, wed the edge of the glass makes it good. Now, the part where we talk about you making it to your taste, a lot of people don't like gin and tonic because they don't like tonic water. And like I said at the beginning, that's your deal. You were allowed to not like it. Don't feel like you need to be pressured into liking gin and tonic because it's the cool drink just now. Don't do it. Drink what you like. That, gin, that raspberry gin with cranberry juice instead of the tonic water with the raspberries and the lime squeezed in there. Ah, oh, it's a lovely drink. And it's your, it could be your style. Maybe the tonic doesn't suit you. It's fine. Don't give in, don't give in to people pushing you into liking stuff just because everyone else does. Ever. Not cool. So, let's make another drink. Let's talk about some different flavour. Let's go a completely other end of the spectrum. I'm going to go with my favourite glasses, my little rocks glass here that I make my old fashions in. I think everyone should invest in a heavy tumbler like this. If you, if you enjoy booze, if you enjoy hard liquor, like this, these are so nice. I really like having a weighty glass and the texture on the outside of the glass. It's part of the experience. And this is kind of the stuff that maybe you don't, we don't talk about enough in cocktails, that it's the ice, it's having quality ice, big ice cubes, and having enough of it that it doesn't melt in your glass. It's all important stuff. So, let's go with, like I said, I'm gonna go completely other end of the spectrum. Let's go with rum. Um, I've got a bit mental. I don't drink very much. Honestly, I don't. I know I do this and I talk about cocktails and alcohol so much, but I don't actually drink that much. I've got a lot of rum because I like it a lot. And I taste it. I'm like, really like that? Can't wait to show some It's this thing of showing off again. Can't wait to show someone how much I like this and maybe they'll like it as well. Um, so we've got this one that's brand new to me, um, Duppy Share. And it's pretty good. And I think it's another one of those ones. It's Caribbean rum of Jamaica and Barbados, but I don't know if it's bottled there. I think it might be another one of those ones that's brought over here. I might be wrong. I don't know much about it. 
which is fine. I'm going to use that and we're going to play around with some different flavours as well. Where's my tin? There it is. So, so once again, we want lots of ice. Lots of ice. If you go with one cube of ice, if you want that ice to turn into water, it's fine. If you go with lots of cubes of ice, they don't melt because they keep it cold while you drink it. Unless you're hosting a mixology class and you leave your drinks for a half an hour before you drink them. Got used to drinking on a Saturday night with you guys with these cocktails half an hour after I've made them and they're starting to taste a little bit watery. But that's all right. So I've got my ice in there. I'm going to stick a pour in this as long as the pour fits in the bottle. It does. Might not ever come out of there again. That was pretty tight. So go for 50 mil in here. Do you know how to free pour as well? Let's talk about that. If you go to a bar and they don't use measures, and they can. I, I actually don't. If I'm teaching people how to make cocktails in a bar, if I'm doing bar consultancy, I always say you should use a measure. If I'm at home making drinks myself, I could do what I want. Um, but to free pour, you count. Bubble two, three, four. That bubble is your start. Your As soon as it comes out, bubble two, three, four, and you cut it off for one shot. Bubble two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you cut it off for a double. That's it. And you test yourself if you can get a test tube uh, because it's thinner and longer, you pour it into a glass like that and then you mark off the 25ml or 50ml or half shot, whatever you're trying to measure out, you mark it off on the test tube and it gives you a much more accurate like thing of whether you've got it right or wrong. Because if you over pour in a test tube, a little bit fills it up lots in a big wide glass like this, a little bit too much, you wouldn't even see it doesn't because it because of the surface area. You know, science, you know what I'm talking about. So I've got 50 mil of that there. I'm going to go with orange. Let's see how this goes. I've never actually tried this before, but I've kind of been thinking about these flavors a little bit. I'll get into what these flavors are in a second as we go. I've got my orange wedge. Squeeze it. I'm going to rim the glass here. Squeeze it again. So I've got two, like, two big orange wedges in there. I have got some root beer. Huh? Are you, you liking where I'm going with it? If you like root beer, you might hate it. There's a, there's a strong chance you might hate it. I'm a big fan. I'm going to try root beer, rum, orange, and then another ingredient, because like I said, I'm breaking, the lo breaking my own rules about three ingredient cocktails. It smells amazing already. I don't know if you, if you don't know, root beer is kind of a little bit aniseedy. It's like Dr. Pepper, but extra. You could use Dr. Pepper, actually, if you wanted. It'd be all right. And then I've got the aromatic bitters that we use. If you were watching last time we did one, we use these for our old fashions. And I've got this cool one. This is only same for his brand, but it tastes amazing. And it's got a little glass pipette, which I very much enjoy. I'm gonna just pipette a little bit of that over there. The aromatic bitters kind of taste a little bit medicinal. I like medicinal. Jägermeister, I'm all right with it. I don't particularly want to do a shot of it because it's not the greatest of medicinal flavours, but I don't mind it. And let's go with this. I've got these oranges. I'm going to just make this one look nice. So I've done a big swipe of orange peel. I'm going to get this orange peel and twist it over the top of the glass, keeping it nice and simple. That goes on top of there. How good does that look? Looks amazing. So, if you don't like um, root beer, you don't have to have root beer. You can have ginger beer. You can even have Coke. I wouldn't. Not, I don't like it very much. Especially not as a mixer. I need to give that a little stir. Um, especially not a mixer. Let's see what this is like. Ah. Oh. That is so good. It's a winner. Actually, it was four ingredients, but that's simple. Mm. I'd say that's a masculine flavour to me. Not to go on about any gender roles, because I'm not like that normally. But it's mass. It's big, big, bold, like 
medicinal and that rum, the punch of alcohol, the bitters on top. Banging. All right, let's get back to some more delicate flavors. So let me just pop that back there. Let's get into some, uh, what we're gonna work with. Should we go vodka? Yeah, let's go mango. I've got some absolute mango. As far as flavored vodkas go, I like it. I like this one a lot, actually. Oh, it's so good. So punchy, so like sweet, but not that it's not cloyingly sweet, it's not sickly, it's just tropical sweetness. But it tastes real to me. That tastes it tastes like booze with some real proper sweetness to it. Alright, what should we do in? Should we do it in another gin balloon? Let's see. I was a bartender, I had free reign, it's kind of quiet, and someone comes in and they're like, ah, I don't know what to drink. I'd just fire off some product. I'd be like, well, what do you like the sound of? You like the sound of something mango flavoured? you want something like fruity like that? Do you want something big and bold like the rum? Do you like med medicinal flavours like that? Do you want it kind of smoky? Do you want... And we'd find, I'd find a way that there's something that you like, there's a flavour that you like, and this is kind of what I'm after from you. I'm after you finding the flavours that you like and... Having just the confidence to play around and see what works. So, we're going to go with 50ml of the old Absolute Mango. I've just used 50ml because a double shot is about right. If you're not a massive drinker and you don't like that punch of booze, just have a single. Have a little splash even. Quite often if someone says to me, um, I don't really drink, I think I'll just have a Coke. I'm like, well, do you not really drink? Because... If you want, we could make a, a cocktail that's just like a little like touch of flavour, like this would shine through, even if you only went doop, little touch of it. If you're not driving, if you're not pregnant, if there's no reason for you, but you, you just don't like to taste the booze that much, a little tiny touch might suit you. I never push that, I never be like, oh, go on, have a drink, you should have a drink. It's not that kind of thing, it's just getting people to try stuff they might enjoy. So. Let's go 50 ml of this. I mean, there we go. So, then I'm gonna go for limes again. Squeezing them in there. Let's go for the little swipe around the edge of the glass again, because I like that. You get, you get this little sharpness against your, your lip as you put the glass to your mouth. It's good, you can smell it. Tastes amazing. So, there we go. Got absolute mango, three lime wedges. I'm going to go with apple and mango. So we've got Capella apple juice. If you've been watching these, you know I can't deal with cheap apple juice. I'm pretentious. When it comes to apple juice, I'm very pretentious. I don't mind admitting it. I'm fine with it. It's gotta be the good stuff. It's gotta be this yellowy stuff. It doesn't have to be Capella. The brand doesn't matter. Morrison's do their own version of it. It's fine. It's good. It's normally on offer for if you buy two for three quid or something. It's a little bit more expensive than the like um, hotel breakfast apple juice. But that hotel breakfast apple juice doesn't cut it. Doesn't balance out against the flavours of booze. This, however, is the stuff. Um, you'll notice I put three languages in here. This is quite sugary. It's quite sweet, it's got a lot of, it's actually got a fair amount of sugar in it. It's not particularly good for you. I'm not talking about being good, stuff being good for us though. I'm just drinking nice drinks. But, absolute mango, pressed apple, and lime juice. Yes, I'm into that. It's good. Yeah. If you are making drinks for people and you make something like this and you're like it's just kind of missing something and you have Chambord or uh, some Cassis or something a liqueur, something sweet, something that's like between 15 and 24 percent normally for liqueurs you can do a little splash, a little like doop, little touch of something sweet, a bit of Pessoa in this would be banging 
That is good. I don't, as far as vodka and mixers go, I don't really drink them. I try not to. I get them bought for me a lot of them one of those rare nights out, but I don't really like them. But that makes me want to drink it. I like it. Okay. Let's go for one more. One more. Oh, and then at the end, sorry, I should have said this at the beginning. Sugar good? We've got the limoncello. Let's finish it off. I'll show you guys how to finish off your limoncello. So I've got mine here. It's been three weeks since we put the lemon peel into the vodka. If you didn't, if you didn't watch that one, it's cool. You're kind of watching for the most important bit, really. This is the bit that we actually make it. This is a whole bottle of absolute vodka. I think I used six or seven lemons and I peeled them, just getting the lemony yellow bit without the white, without the pith and drop that in there and it's been there three weeks. I've given it a little shake, a little turnover every now and again. If you kept it still, it's fine. And you can kind of see that the lemon peel has gone white. All of the lemony goodness is out there and it smells amazing. But we'll get to that in a minute. We're just going to make one more. Let's see what we've got. We've done rum, we've done... Um, Let's make something, let's do another gin one. So just classic gin. We've got this silent pool gin. This one is for, I've mentioned him already today actually, my friend Martin Lee. He, uh, we went to university together. We've been friends for about close to 20 years. He's a good guy sometimes. But he loves a gin and bitter lemon. You like a gin, gin and bit of lemon? Let's kind of make one. But when he used to come into Infusion, a bar I used to work in in Sunderland when I went to university, he would always order a triple gin, bit of lemon, Ricky style or something. He'd call it, he'd just say something ridiculous like that. And I'd just squeeze in a load of lemons, a bit of sugar syrup, shake it up. And this is pretty much a Tom Collins, really. We made one a few weeks ago. I'd shake it up. And then I'd top it up with a little bit of lemonade or soda. He liked it with lemonade, I liked it with soda. Didn't like the, the sugariness of the lemonade. But let's make something similar to that, but way easier. No shaking, not that much squeezing. We're just going to go with a double shot of your favourite gin, whichever one you like. This side of the pool, by the way, is excellent. I'm a very big fan. That's not going to work. So it's a little bit slack. That one's better. So, 50 mil. Let's pop this little bad boy back. Oh, right there. That's it. So, I've got 50 mil. Let's go for three lime wedges squeezed and dropped in. You see how I rimmed the glass again with this lime wedge? That's how it goes. And I always shield as well. When I squeeze, I always have this other hand over the top of the glass and it's ingrained in me. This bar etiquette that I used to make drinks in front of people. I'd never make a drink on the back bar because people can't see me. I want people to see what's going into their drink. I want to be able to see their face and talk to them and ask them about the things that they like and the things they don't like. And I'd change it. Change anything for anyone. It's how I do things. Yes, mango. All right, so we've got double shot of gin, three lime wedges, and really simply, I've just got some sparkling Sicilian lemonade. It's the same thing as Victorian lemonade, same thing essentially as bitter lemon, not that much difference in it, but it's a simple drink. The fresh fruit in there changes it. If you're not getting a decent amount of fresh lime in there, or fresh lemon, or even fresh orange would work as well. I don't think that that's the thing. I don't think that's the one. Let's see. Good. It reminds me of university. Amazing. Simple drink. So, let's go through a little bit before we make the limoncello, just very quickly. Let's go through how to marry flavours together. How to change things. Oh, wait, I have one more thing. I'm gonna change this one. I've made it now, um, so I think I should use it. I've got my favourite little addition. It's so easy, I've chopped up strawberries, covered them in sugar, and it makes this sugar syrup that 
is this strawberry syrup that's so tasty and it just changes things so much and I'm going to sprinkle a few of these strawberry slices over the top of here and then try and get some of the juice and put that in there like that. and hopefully it'll make this kind of sunset style yes that is even better now having those strawberries on top of the drink looks good and it smells it smells amazing mm. Amazing, I can't believe I forgot about them, they were right there as well. Cool, so let's talk a little bit about mixing up flavours that we enjoy to be able to make it how you like it and change things and twist, do little twists on classics. So there's so many classic cocktails out there, like the ones you hear of all the time, Cosmopolitan, Old Fashioned, a Bramble, like there's, it's endless. If you look at them, they have balance. They've got the right amount of citrus, to booze, to sweetness, to every. To, it's just balanced. So those drinks, and they might not suit you, but they are balanced to a way that suits someone. You find the one of those classics that you like, play around with the flavours. So you could make a bramble. So a bramble is gin, lemon, sugar, crushed ice, and you build it all up with the gin, lemon, sugar, crushed ice, and then you drizzle creme de mure over the top and it makes this purple bleed through and it tastes amazing. One of my favourite cocktails. That creme de mure, the blackberry liqueur, you could change that to anything. That's a blank canvas to me. If I just think in my head, bramble, I'm going to change it. What am I going to change it to? I just think, well, what other flavours could work? What's another flavour that works with gin and lemon and sugar? It's literally everything. Everything works with that. There's a really good um, pear cognac that I try and use a lot. I don't have any just now because it's kind of expensive and um, it, it does, it's not sold very many places, but um, it's called Zante, like with an X. Zante pear cognac. Oh, it's so nice. Um, that, you make a pear bramble. It's not a bramble. I'm not very good at naming things, but imagine that. You've got gin, you've got lemon, you've got sugar. You just swapped the blackberry liqueur out for pear. You've got yourself a delicious cocktail. What could be better? Or let's talk about a cosmopolitan. Very in recent history, it's not that recent, it's probably 30 years ago. Uh, I think it was Dick Bradsaw, a famous mixologist. He changed a cosmopolitan, which is citrus vodka, cointreau, lime juice, cranberry juice. That's it, that's a that's a cosmopolitan. He changed the citrus vodka for absolute current. The current they're like Current, the black currant flavoured vodka by Absolute made a metropolitan. You just did a little twist, thought about the flavours that were in there and what could possibly work. Metropolitan. It's a modern classic. I haven't seen it around for a while, but I think it's a modern classic. You can change those things. You can add stuff in. So let's talk about a mojito. It's easy to change up. You've got rum, you've got mint, you've got sugar, and you've got a little splash of soda in the top. That soda is the easy one to swap out. Your little splash in the top, I normally do apple juice because it's my, one of my favourite mixers, that pressed apple juice. It makes it amazing. You could make that rum, a slightly different kind of rum. You could go um, the, this uh, pineapple rum that's popular just now. You could go for spiced rum. You could even change the rum out completely and go tequila. I went, I've, I've been on holiday to Mexico. I had a lot of tequila mojitos. It wasn't on the menu, I was just like, you guys have got a good tequila, make me a tequila mojito. And I had a holiday tequila mojito and it was delicious. You can change anything. So, if you've got a flavoured vodka, or a flavoured gin, let's have a look. We've got the old Hendrix Midsummer Solstice, which is very good. It's, um, it's very herbal. So it's, it's got... I think it's like blackberries, black currants, but it's very herbal indeed. Infused natural floral essences in celebration of the eternal mysteries of midsummer solstice. Good. So we've got these herbal flavours in here. That Mediterranean tonic, like we said, it's just got a little, this little hint of floral stuff with it as well. Sometimes just smelling those two things together 
make me think that that might work. So if we did a gin and tonic with this, and a Mediterranean tonic, and then let's say we added in some um, lavender, that would be amazing. You can buy like dried lavender that's food grade so that you can actually like put it in stuff and eat it. I think that would make it like extra floral, really nice, it'd look pretty. Cool. Really good. So, enough talking. I feel like I'm going on a little bit today, but um, Hannah, can you pass me the sugar, please? So let's make this limoncello. So this is easy. Thank you. Oh, I could have grabbed it myself. I didn't see you put it there. Thank you. Um, right. In here, we've got 700 millilitres of vodka because it was a whole bottle of absolute vodka. In here, I've got uh, half a litre, 500 millilitres of sugar syrup. To make this sugar syrup, this is important, I put in sugar into, my, into this jug here up to 350 millilitres and then I poured it into a pan, so this was empty, and then I put 350 millilitres of water in here, so it was one to one. So there was the same amount of sugar, same amount of water. I put it in a pan and I put it on low heat until all that sugar dissolved into the water. So get that one to one sugar syrup. And that helps. It doesn't have to be that. You could make it like one to two sugar syrup. So with a bit more water to sugar, it makes it a bit easier to dissolve. You don't have, you don't have to put it on the hob. You can pretty much just put it in a bottle and shake it up. But I find this works the best. It's kind of thick. You can see it's got a viscosity to it. What's important is, as we add to this, we taste it and see. Ideally, I probably should have, and I didn't, but it doesn't matter. I would normally strain this first, but it's only to avoid getting a sticky sieve. It doesn't really matter, because all I'm going to do is put it through a, a fine sieve. Not a super fine one, just a normal sieve, not a colander, a sieve. I just pour it through that and catch it in a pan and then pour it back into this or a bottle or something. So, I'm going to just... Pour in a bit, and then I'll taste it. The best way to taste it, unless you, if you've got a spoon, you can use a spoon, but I'm gonna use a straw. I just, I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit. If I stick the straw in, and tap the top of it, and then pick it up with the top covered, there's limoncello in here now. And that's pretty good already. It's definitely not sweet enough, and I kinda knew that but I needed a base level, I needed to taste it so I knew what it was like, so I can feel what's going on as I add more. I don't think I'm going to use all of this. Oh, come on, I need to shake it up a little bit again. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to use all of that sugar. So I've got 700 millilitres of vodka, 500 millilitres of sugar syrup. I think I'm going to have some sugar syrup left. So get that kind of in your head. And your sugar syrup, even if you make it the same way as me, same measurements, it might come out different. You might mess it up, you might not dissolve all the sugar and then realise there's something in the bottom of the pan, it won't be as sweet. There's so many things that could change. So just keep, do it this way, don't listen to how much I've put in and be like, oh that's how much sugar it is and put it all in and then realise you're not doing enough. Have you seen the viral video of the old guy? And he's like, right, so I've made this limoncello, it's been sitting here, I've, I've put, added the sugar, I'm not trying it yet, I'm going to try it in front of all you guys. And then he tries it and he's like, oh, I can't believe it's disgusting. Oh. A couple of people sent that to me, it's funny. But don't be that guy, taste it, check out what's going on, make sure it's right. Okay. I reckon this might be it. See? That is the one. Ah, so good, so good. Remember, you can mix up your limoncello. You could have put orange peel. Oh God, I nearly dropped it. You could have put orange peel in there and made arancello. That would have been fine. It would have been lovely. You could have done a mix of between orange and lemon. Could have used grapefruit, but you kind of got to wash them first because they're very waxy or grapefruits, like um, artificial wax. I don't know why. They wax them more than other fruit. But you can change it. You could put a little star anise in there and change it again. You could... Put cinnamon in there, it'd be weird, but it'd change it again. Anything. That's what I'm on about. I want you guys to find the things that you like and make it work for you. That's what makes me excited about life. 
that we're all so different and there's crossovers between people who like similar things but you like different things. That's so cool to me. So good. So, we've made some cocktails. We're gonna, we've made some limoncello. What are we going to do next time? I think we should go back to things a little bit more complicated, a little bit more niche. It's going to be in a month's time, so one month's time. We're going to do this again. Uh, it'll be the second, yeah, the second Saturday in August, and we're going to make homemade lemonade, but like a little bit more fancy. There's going to be extra ingredients, there's going to be some cool stuff, and then we'll make some cocktails with homemade lemonade. I'll tell you how to make homemade tonic water, how to make homemade Coca-Cola, how to make homemade dandelion and burdock. Cool, but we're just going to make lemonade, because otherwise we'll be here for hours. I've already been here five minutes over time, but I had a lot to say. I, had a lot, I brought a lot of stuff out, so I had a lot to talk about. If you've got questions, please drop me a message. And just see what you can come up with. If you're not sure, ask me. If we, or if you tried something like, I didn't really like it. Tell me. And we'll work it out. Oh, so good. That's tasting even better now that those strawberries have sat in there. It's changed it. So, that was fun. Hi, guys. Hi. Let's see if I had any questions. I don't think I did. It doesn't always tell you. It's so weird. That's why I never really check it mid thing because sometimes sometimes you can't even tell. All right, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you all so very very much. I am back on the closed group. If you're not a part of it, get involved. Come and do some cool stuff. Got some classes on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Got rest based training, calisthenic skills, and yoga. Come and do some yoga. Come and do some calisthenic skills. Even if you're not balancing on your hands and you're not doing handstands. I'll teach you some cool stuff. Thank you, guys. This is terrible. Look, I've cut off the top of my head. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Enjoy your Saturday night. Get yourself a takeaway. Have a, have a beer. You'll be all right. All right. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.